Welcome to Connecting with Gaming Creators, four things developers should know at the Google for Games Developer Summit in 2021. We're doing this virtually, so let's cue the crowd. Let's cue the cheering. Woo, woo. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is great to be here today. We have a panel with two YouTube gaming creators, 8-Bit Thug and I, Christine. I'm hoping by the end of this session, you will walk away with a better understanding of the gaming community on YouTube and how you can better connect with them. My name is Barbara McDonald, and I'm a product lead for YouTube Paid Digital Goods. But in a previous life, when I started at YouTube six years ago, I worked on our YouTube gaming team. And in my spare time, you can catch me every single Tuesday night, live streaming on my variety gaming channel, hashtag Barb Tuesdays on, on YouTube gaming. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube gaming, in 2020, YouTube gaming had its biggest year ever. Okay, over 100 billion watch hours of gaming content with over 40 million active gaming channels on YouTube. Those numbers are astounding. And live streaming last year especially grew on YouTube. We had such an incredible year. We saw watch time from video game live streams grow to over 10 billion hours with creators such as Laserbeam, Mortal, Courage, The Donato, and Typical Gamer streaming exclusively on YouTube. And we saw Valkyrie grow to become one of the largest female live streamers across all platforms ever since she started exclusively streaming on YouTube. Publishers such as Supercell and PlayStation have been using premieres to generate excitement over major announcements where they can bring together crowds to engage and watch the first showing of a particular video on YouTube in a shared experience. Earlier this year, the team behind Brawl Stars organized a community event called Brawl Stars Brawl Talk Summer of Monsters, which attracted over 750,000 peak concurrent viewers, making it one of the most successful video games related premieres on YouTube to date. Now, Let's get into the panel. That's enough about YouTube gaming. Let's meet our expert gaming creators. We've got 8-Bit Thug and I, Christine. So give me your 30-second elevator pitch. What are your channels all about? What type of content do you make? How do you engage with your audiences? Let's start with Christine. Hi, so I am a variety streamer slash um, gameplay -er. Uh, <laughs> I do Let's Plays, walkthroughs. Um, I play a variety of games from Among Us to um, a little bit of Resident Evil. Scary games really frighten me. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I, um, like, I, 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 Nintendo games, Miitopia. I'm really loving Miitopia right now. Super cute game. Um, and engaging with my audience um, uh, through a variety of ways live streaming is one talking to them directly as I'm live streaming um conversating with them super chats kind of intro like um doing special shout outs for that and members and things like that um also through social media um connecting and engaging with them on there as well okay thug over to you give me your pitch of your channel uh, my channel is like more of a purely gaming channel which includes a lot of live streams i also do a lot of uh, like you know show ips wherein I'm, i've been running some talk shows some around esports uh, you know cover esports coverage wherein i talk about specific issues that are related to the country that i come from india like you know where i talk about the things that are happening in gaming in india so, uh, i also do a talk show called chacha with thagwa wherein i talk with different gamers from around india and you know bring about their history where they come from talk about stuff that they don't really talk in their content that they make. Apart from that, I think I've been making great use of IFTTT and on screen, you know, I have developed some really good integrations with regards to super chats and how uh, the graphic packaging and all those stuff for my channel, which has really helped me a lot in the way I, uh, you know, interact with my audience. Definitely super chats and, uh, you know, paying more attention to the chat section has helped me a lot to interact. Basically, I'm using everything that YouTube has to offer to interact with my audience, like be it the community posts or these, I feel every feature has an advantage mm -hmm. of its own and everyone should give a shot to every feature actually. <laughs> 
I love this. Uh, so when I say I work on YouTube pay digital goods, I actually mean Super Chat. I didn't know you guys were going to bring up Super Chat like that. This is a great little plug for that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you both have a really large fan base and audience of gamers. Can you share a little bit more about your community? Uh, once again, let's start with Christine. Um, yes. Yeah, so since I am a variety streamer, I do have a variety um, of different members in my audience in regards to age and gender and likes and things like that. So um, I have the youngest that you can have on YouTube, I think is 13. And then the oldest that you can have, um, I think it might be 44 plus as far as the age thing <laughs> on analytics. But um, I do have, my audience ranges in different periods in their life as well. Some people are in high school, some people are in college. Um, some are other moms. I'm a mom that games. So um, even though that's not my pushing, you know, that's not what I brand myself as, that's who I am. And um, there are a lot of moms I get DMs about, hey, I'm also a mom that games and I'm 30 something. And the fact that I see you makes me feel less um, cringe about trying to continue it because a lot of people have a stigma about adults playing games. And so um, I have a very diverse and positive audience that they don't really stand for negativity when we're streaming. It's all about fun. There might be some trolling, but it's all in fun between me and them. And then, well, mostly them making fun of me because I'm <laughs> not really great at games, but I have a lot of fun. Um, and then them laughing when I scream at scary games because I'm terrified. But um, we're very positive. We keep we try not to do any negative things or keep up negativity. So if someone's negative, we try to give them a chance to be positive and then we have to use the ban button if they <laughs> choose not to. But um, for the most part, everybody's pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, Thug, give us, um, uh, tell us more about your audience. Um, my audience comprises of mainly people who are into hardcore gaming or people who want to mm -hmm. seek a career in esports. Uh, the reason being that me being an esports athlete uh, at the very beginning of my career before I called it quits and switched to more of the entrepreneurial side, running an mm -hmm. esports organization and one of India's biggest talent management agency for gamers, managing the likes of popular YouTube creators like Mortal. I mean, like I'm the first person to have ever worked with Mortal and we still continue to do so. And we do actually have a great relation. So I believe that my audience is more about people who want to hang around uh, and, like have fun towards the end of their day because I generally start my streams pretty late like 11 p.m. my time and then I go on until like 3 a.m. so people who just want to have a good laugh towards the end of the day and not into hardcore gaming but more about the chats and the fun that we have the conversations so I feel that you know I'm just bringing more of mixture of uh, hardcore gaming but then uh, with which backed by good conversations and entertainment. So I think my community is more around that. And the age group is pretty similar uh, to what Christine said. It's more around 11, uh, 13 to 45. But yes, the median is more around 18 to 24. Yes. Uh, key, key tip right here. Everybody in the world games and everybody in the, girl, in the world watches other people game on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now, Christine, um, what is it, do you think, about YouTube that makes it such a popular platform for uh, mobile gaming content? I think accessibility is the biggest thing. Um, there are some things that I learned actually being a content creator that um, either audience members have told me or other creators have told me is that with mobile gaming, um, it's really huge in certain areas of the world where, uh, you know, traditional inter internet infrastructure is not 100% complete, but a lot of people have their phones. So they're playing games on their phones. They're watching things on their phones. They're ordering food or doing things on their phones. So um, I think that accessibility, right? <laughs> like I'm in red. Everything, life. everything's on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my life is on my phone. So I think because of that accessibility, I think that's why it's so big and huge on YouTube and YouTube's so easily accessible as well. Yeah. Uh, Thug, what drew you to the mobile gaming space? Um, so I've been like a mobile gamer throughout my life. When I said I was an esports athlete, I was actually a yeah. player for PUBG Mobile. So I mean, mm -hmm. like, I, like mobile gaming has been something that has been so close to my heart. A major reason being was also where I come from, my background. I mean, like buying a PC uh, was not always easy, but affording a mobile phone was pretty easier uh, back mm -hmm. at that time. So I guess that is the one reason which gave me time, uh, which helped me get time out of, uh, you know, my like my regular life to you know actually go ahead and play games, which eventually turned into a profession. So I think for 
me, it's been multiple things. You know, me trying to find out a leisure time that is not too uh, difficult to achieve. I mean, like not stepping out of my house or maybe not trying to spend too much. So I think mobile gaming was my perfect escape, to be honest. Yeah. And and what we've seen on YouTube gaming, at least, is a surge in the popularity of mobile gaming content. What do you think is causing that? Um, I was going through a particular vlog which, state, uh, which stated that three out of four adults cons, uh, consume YouTube content on their mobile. 70%, close to 70% of the watched hours, watch hours for YouTube comes through uh, mobile platforms. So I think that's a very big reason. It gives the, so like just imagine if if you are an, if I'm a person who's absorbing some content on YouTube mobile and if it's a particular mobile game, then it's like, it, it would not be too difficult for me to actually go ahead and try that game if I like that game. I mean, I could like just okay. close the app and immediately Immediately go ahead and download it from either of the Play Store or the App Store. So I think that is what helps a lot in conversions, which eventually gives a rise to the mobile gaming, uh, you know, scene overall. I mean, like the the point is the audience need to relate with the content that you are creating. Mm -hmm. And when you're holding a phone in your hand and if you see something that you like and that is immediately accessible to you, I mean, like what Christine said, accessibility is the biggest thing. So I think that is one thing that definitely helps a lot for the, for the mobile gaming space. Apart from that, the user base of YouTube definitely in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, attracts a lot of uh, creators to join in because of the options that they have. I mean, like, you need not be, like, it's not only the gaming uh, audience that we have on YouTube. We have audience from different genres, from different backgrounds. That is very unique to the platform like YouTube, wherein it's not only about live streaming. We have people from coming for VOD content as well. So the scope of growth and expansion on YouTube is really well. I mean, like, we have seen Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast started from his main channel, then he switched on to a Mr. Beast gaming channel. So there's so much more that you can do. So I think that's the reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why YouTube becomes a hotspot for mobile gaming and gaming overall, I would say. Yeah. And what do you think is the trend looking into the future? Where Where is mobile gaming going? Uh, I mean, like, it's just going upwards. We have had crazy numbers coming in recently. Uh, just a couple of weeks back, we had the Free Fire tournament happening, which peaked at 4.9 million uh, viewers. So these are insane numbers. We haven't seen those numbers mm -hmm. in the biggest of T T1 esports. So I believe that mobile mobile is the future, and the sooner and the faster developers realize this, they have a long way to go. And we have seen uh, recently Riot announcing Valorant Mobile, Apex uh, EX announcing Apex Mobile. So yes, they realize mm -hmm. this. And I believe that mobile is the future. And... Uh, everyone would soon realize like it's just a matter of time when this thing becomes the mainstream for gaming. I think I think I need to start playing some more games on my phone. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you should. Now, Thug, we are expecting to have uh, folks in the audience who both develop and market mobile games. So let's stay within the mobile game sphere for a little bit. What are the top three things they need to understand about the gaming community on YouTube and how they can better connect with your audience of gamers? Um, so I believe that developers need to understand that as uh they need to understand about the content that runs on YouTube. I believe there are three different verticals. It's esports, it's uh updates, the updates that come in game and walkthroughs. What I believe that the developer has control over is esports and updates. Walkthroughs are something that, to be honest, a developer cannot really control. If a person finishes off the game, that's it. That's the end of the story. But esports mm -hmm. and updates are something that have worked really well for developers who have taken keen interest on it. Finest examples would be Tencent and Garena with Free Fire and PUBG Mobile. And for updates, you did mention Brawl Stars. I mean, like the Brawl Talks, they have had excellent results in the past. Same for their creators as well. I've been a PUBG Mobile player uh, throughout my life. I have seen so many uh, Free Fire players from my country, Total Gaming being one of the biggest uh, Free Fire creators. They have had exceptional results. And I believe the input that the developer had in that is regular updates and esports. I strongly believe that if a developer understands that, okay, if a creator has a huge fan base, the attraction the fan base would have when they actually see that creator go out on a LAN event and lift a trophy, if we are able to help them with that sort of an ecstasy, that's what attracts the audience into actually playing that game. I mean, like, you would always want to... I mean, like, football would not have been that big if you would not have a rivalry between Messi and Ronaldo. Like, no one cares about your street guys, Colony boys playing football. It's all about, you know, <laughs> there's something big to it, something on the competitive level. I mean, like, that is what drives the, you know, the generation that we are addressing to in mobile gaming especially. 
Okay, actually, I want to I wanna follow up on that. So with mobile gaming viewers, um, is there anything that's different about this audience on YouTube, maybe different than um, sort of people who consume non-mobile gaming content? Or is there anything different about YouTube audiences versus other social media platforms? Um, to be honest, I felt that YouTube is a great place for... I mean, like, YouTube is a great place for everything, to be honest. But I have been mm-hmm. more of a live streamer throughout my career. <laughs> so I felt that the live streaming experience for mobile gaming is really good. And especially uh, from my personal experience, the place where I come from, India, has a huge audience base for live streaming. So I felt that this is one thing that makes uh, YouTube and the audience stand out, that uh, the way we, the more we can enhance their live streaming experience in terms of maybe drops. Like recently, I saw YouTube did it with uh, Call of Duty League. And we have also done with PUBG Mobile in the past those really help a lot so i think this kind of uh, collaborations help a lot for mm-hmm. the audience for the creator for the developer mm-hmm. but this is what makes youtube stand out i mean like the live stream experience that we are able that we or the platform itself is being able to provide to the audience we cater okay cool I'm going to switch back over to Christine and ask a similar question. So um, Thug works primarily within the mobile gaming space, and Mm -hmm. you are more of a variety gamer. So similar questions for you. Outside of mobile gaming, so in this variety gaming, Nintendo gaming uh, sphere that you are in, what (laughs) should game developers, publishers, and marketers know about the gaming community on YouTube? Um, Like Just like Thug was saying, it, updates is a huge, a huge thing. Um, that's something that you can, if you want to fall back on an example, would be Fall Guys. When Fall Guys came out, they the surge was not expected for them. And so <laughs> they had to play catch up really quickly with trying to update their servers, updating their um, styles and their maps and all of that to keep up with the, with the speed at which they were kind of rising. Mm-hmm. So definitely I would say updating your game um, have things on the ready, um, just like Thug was saying, having events and having these um, these moments will keep adding excitement for your game, keep wanting people to engage in your game if they know that they're a part of something, Be, especially now with the way that the times have been and we don't know when this is going to end, right? And mm-hmm. a lot of people want to connect with other people. So having events like um, community events and things like that, that are in connection with creators, that they're watching their creator play this game that they love, they join, they play the game, and having this communal type of experience via the internet is is definitely huge. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Yeah. So how can uh, people who make video games, how can they connect with you as a content creator to run these types of virtual events? I would say reaching out, um, email, DMing, um, those two, or like on social media, whichever one works best for, for you. Uh, LinkedIn, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do put Ooh. all my eggs in that basket because not everybody <laughs> checks their LinkedIn. Okay, but like Twitter, okay, pro tip, pro tip, <laughs> gaming creators don't necessarily check LinkedIn. Okay, right, not on a regular basis, maybe once a year. So, um, try to stay on social media. Um, that's the other thing. Have an active social media. Make it, um, make it appear or be accessible to your audience via social media. So maybe tweeting kind of like Among Us does. Every now and again, Among Us just tweets something funny. It's not necessarily a game update, but they're sharing stuff from their community. Their um, Insomniac Games does that as well, especially with Spider-Man stuff. They repost things. They appear or they are very engaged with their community. And you definitely want to... um, you know, keep that going. So I would say reaching out to creators on social media, engaging with your community, emailing them. Those are the the best ways to kind of group together and come up with like events. Okay, cool. Uh, Thug, I believe you've actually partnered with uh, with some uh, mobile game developers, um, similarly to what Christine is talking about. Uh, could you sort of walk us through what one of these campaigns would have looked like? Right. Uh, I mean, like I work with a couple of uh, more than a couple of developers, Tencent, Activision, Supercell. I've had some lovely experiences with uh, Tencent and Supercell in terms of content and content that we were able to create and, you know, deliverables that we were able to achieve. The biggest key takeaway of why those campaigns were successful, I think in case of Supercell, it was a very coercive decision with regards to the campaign that we want to run. I mean, like I had the flexibility to actually decide if we want to do this and, you know, having a say in the campaign, because as creators, we understand best what 
what our audience needs us mm-hmm. and if you want to mm-hmm. like we understand we can help with that bridging the gap between the developer and the needs of the audience so that uh, definitely helps i think it's more of the community feedback that supercell takes really well i have seen uh, their community manager super active on twitter taking away uh, you know feedbacks in a very first and like in a very direct manner so that really helps a lot mm-hmm. with tencent the thing was a little bit different but the campaigns that they used to create their community or marketing guys used to do would be exactly what we need so i believe that for them it was more of a detailed market study understanding the markets really well but i felt uh, campaigns should be more content driven and more driven towards mm-hmm. the needs of the creator rather than mm-hmm. fulfilling the needs of the marketing uh, as a whole i mean like you know mm-hmm. if a creator can modify the campaign or have a flexibility over how the campaign needs to go the results could be way better than brands can even uh, developers can even expect so i mm-hmm. think working hand in hand like christine said uh, you know outreach community outreach creator outreach and working hand in hand with the creators really help a lot in getting the best out of the campaign mm-hmm. Can you give us some more specifics? So you mentioned you did, you you have actually partnered with uh, with a game publisher here. What right. what what was? Can you give me a concrete example of what that campaign looked like? Right. I mean, like a very fine example could be uh, what we did with Supercell. It was for okay. the game Brawl Stars. Um, so for Brawl Stars, we did a campaign with three or four creators, which included myself. It was Mortal. It was Scout and a couple of popular faces from India. Uh, so I still remember, like, I'll just talk about the impact part of that campaign. I remember yeah, when cool. I was streaming. So since my name is 8-Bit Thug and in Brawl Stars, we have a character called 8-Bit. Uh, I did not have mm-hmm. that. Uh, so while I was streaming live, I'm pretty sure the team was watching, overseeing it. And I said that I wish I could have the 8-Bit uh, character with me and they sent it uh, to the inbox uh, like on the inbox i had it on my mail that this character is unlocked so i think that the impact that it had on my audience like mm-hmm. that was such a personal experience i could give mm-hmm. them that see that uh, the developer cares about us and just imagine people who are like i would say die hard fanboys they would instantly go and say okay for thug will do this i think that is what an impact campaign looks like and i re- uh, and i re- if i'm not wrong i can recall i made a clan immediately and i had like more like i had the cap uh, fulfilled it if it was 50 people who could join the clan i had instantly 50 people join it from the live stream so i believe that those kind of campaigns which have and also we did a lot more with uh, pubg mobile for their different uh, updates uh, those have been very impactful i mean like we have had millions of numbers in terms of views and conversions so i'm pretty sure like you know this campaigns have like there are so many more campaigns with these two companies uh, with these two developers that have been so impactful but this particular with the super selvan was a little bit surprising and you know i felt like the most contented doing that because the experience overall that i could provide to my uh, audience and uh, the experience that i had doing it was just amazing and i still remember the feedback they were pretty much happy with how it all went And I love that you were able to sort of use your audience and uh, make content that they found really engaging and they found it engaging enough that as you mentioned they went and they installed the game and then they started they joined your clan and like filled Absolutely. up your clan. Right. This happened yeah. like on a live stream. So you know, I mean like we have had those. So I think that's what I said, you know, if we see that the if we can bridge the gap between the audience and the developer, if the mm-hmm. content uh, creator plays a pivotal role, then definitely every campaign can be super successful in terms of reach, conversions or any ROI that the developer is looking for. Majorly mm-hmm. it's mostly it's installs the uh, you know from what we understand, but I think it yeah. can be but it needs to be long term also. I think another aspect to such campaigns yeah. are it needs to be long lived. Uh, what I felt is one off stone really work really well. You could hire or you could get a very big creator to do a dedicated video or integration for once in a year that does not really go well when they see that a relation is being established throughout a period of time that's when things work really well i mean like you need to be patient for a little bit low futuristic mm-hmm. approach and a long term approach to get those results coming in Yeah, it's similar feedback that we give to uh to creators on YouTube which is be consistent with your content. Right. Uh and so it's a similar type of thing in terms of a game campaign. Um you might be doing, you know, it might be several campaigns that you're doing sort of with the same game publisher, game developers uh that's really going to help engage with your audience and get them to hopefully install the game, start playing it more, mm-hmm. bringing their friends into it and then and watching more of your content. Absolutely. All right. Well, that is sort of the end of all of the questions that I had for the two of you. I want to thank you very much for being here with us today. Before I wrap things up, is there anything any remaining words that you would like to say to uh our audience out there? 
Um, I would say uh, thank you for first letting me be a part of this. Um, and if there's any takeaway from this, I would say mm-hmm. community. Community is the biggest thing. Engage with the community and creators. And like Doug was saying, like having a consistent campaign, that's definitely something that you want to do if you want to help with conversions and having more people engage and download your game. Thank you. Doug, any, any remaining last minute words from you? Uh, yeah, first of all, it's been an absolute pleasure to address uh, uh, such a big community you know, of developers. Uh, mm-hmm. First of all, thank you to everyone for having me here. I would say, like Christine perfectly pointed out, everything that I had as a key takeaway, community and creators, you know, the connect, the bridge, uh, you know, bridging the gap is what's the need of the market right now. And mm-hmm. if that's done perfectly, it, work, it would work out really well for all of us. I think that's the key takeaway. Excellent. Well, thank you to Christine. Thank you to 8-Bit Thug for answering all of these questions today. Thank you for watching this and uh, have a great rest of your Google for Game Developer Summit 2021. Signing off.